Hey, Sexy students, I am so glad that you've gathered with us again uh, tonight on YouTube uh, for our midweek gathering. Um, this is a, it's, it's a challenging time, it's a weird time, but I hope that uh, you're staying connected with us. Uh, this is a great way to do it tonight. Uh, again, at 8 o'clock, like we did last week, we're going to meet on Zoom. So if you were part of it last week, then come again. If you weren't uh, able to gather with us last week, make sure that you make some time for it tonight. Uh, the IDs for those meetings can be found on social media. Uh, or you uh, were sent a text message earlier today uh, so that you can connect with that. Uh, but speaking of social media, like I said last week, we want to make sure that we're staying connected. And right now, social media is one of the best ways that we can do that. So make sure that you're following us on Instagram at First Saxy Students and on Facebook, First Saxy Students on there. So you can follow along with us. We've got a, a lot of things that we're doing to keep in contact with you, to have some fun, putting a, a bunch of different challenges. Uh, like last week, this week we have a memory verse challenge. This week it is the verse John 10, 10. So we've already had a few students who have loaded that. So find some time tonight, maybe tomorrow to load that. We'll pick a winner tomorrow afternoon and you'll get a special prize uh, for saying that. The other thing we loaded yesterday uh, was our weekly video challenge. Um, and so uh, last week, Joe won it uh, with his video of, uh, of his trick shot with his RC car. Um, this week, the video challenge is for you to have a, a dance video. So maybe you want to recreate a TikTok. Maybe you want to come up with something of your own, which would be awesome. Maybe, I don't know if you guys have seen the oh, na, 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 oh, na, na, na videos. I, I don't know why I think those are so cool every, every time I see them. But the challenge is that you would film yourself doing some type, type of a dance please make sure it's appropriate and then tag us in it uh extra points if you get somebody to dance with you maybe it's a sibling or your mom or dad just make sure you sanitize if you're going to touch or keep your six feet distance if you can all right but load those and make sure you tag us the other thing i want to let you know about uh, jared asked me to challenge you guys to upload videos of yourself sharing your testimony or sharing the gospel and so we want these videos to be about a minute long in which you're sharing what God has done in your life and what God uh, gives to the rest of us, the, the salvation that he offers us. And so uh, I, I know that this can take a lot of courage. It's going to be challenging for a few of you or for all of us to be able to do this. But find some time in the next couple of days to load a video of you sharing your testimony or sharing the gospel and make sure to tag us in it. We want to use one of those on a Sunday morning. Uh, guys, I know that that's, I know that that might be out of your comfort zone. Like even more than dancing is probably out of your comfort zone. Uh, but do this, guys. A great opportunity. Social media, man, it gets a bad rap sometimes for understandable reasons. But right now, we can be utilizing it to connect with each other, but also to help other people know more about God. So be sharing those verses, be sharing those awkward dance videos, and find some time to share your testimony so that we can use that. I hope that you are connecting with us. It's a great, great way to uh, to stay in contact. Um, so tonight we're continuing our series looking at, at, at Jesus and who he is. And that's, that's what we started with. The very first week we asked the question of who is Jesus. And uh, talking about the importance of you answering that question. That's a very personal question. Last week we looked at his ministry. We looked at his life. We looked specifically at Matthew 5 through 7, which is called the Sermon on the Mount. In which Jesus kind of puts a new paradigm. He, he, he sets it out of, of how we're supposed to live our life. And, and uh, it's really, really encouraging, really, really challenging. If you haven't read Matthew 5 through 7, then I encourage you to do that. Tonight, Nathan's going to be teaching on the sacrifice of Christ and what that means for us and how important it is. Next week, we're going to talk about resurrection. Um, and then finally, we're going to close out our series uh, looking at who Jesus is and how that impacts our life. Like, what does it mean that Jesus existed? What does that mean for me? And what am I supposed to do with that? And so I hope that you'll join us over the next couple of weeks as we finish out this series. But I want to pray right now. We're going to show a video, and then Nathan's going to come and share more about the sacrifice of Christ. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you so much for tonight. I thank you so much for these students being able to come and gather with us. And I thank you for technology uh, and the way that it's connecting us right now. Uh, Lord, I pray for these students. I pray for uh, anyone else who is on uh, YouTube tonight just joining us. Lord, we pray uh, that we would be challenged and encouraged by your love, that we would recognize just how incredible of a sacrifice it was for Jesus to die on the cross for us. And God, we thank you for it. Uh, Lord, I just pray that you would uh, challenge us and encourage us to be uh, utilizing the opportunities you've given us uh, through uh, posting videos of us sharing scripture, of us sharing our testimony. God, that we would rise to the challenge there of doing that and making your name famous. Uh, God, I, I just pray uh, for our students to uh, 
uh, to be comforted, to be kept safe uh, during this time and the season that we're going through. And uh, Lord, just that you would give us a time soon where we get to gather again in person um, and just celebrate together. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey students, how's it going? Um, I hope you're healthy, I hope you're well, I hope you're uh, sane most of all. Uh, parents, if you're in the room, I hope you're sane as well. I know, I know that's difficult uh, through this time. Um, I have a question for you all this week. Um, um, it, it's a question that's been, been on my mind, been on uh, uh, me while I've been doing this lesson. And, and, and the more I did it, I just I don't really feel like I had a really good answer, honestly. Um, the question I want to ask you is, what is the thing, what, what is the biggest thing you have ever given to or given for another person? What is the biggest thing you have given to someone or given for someone? Because I tried to think about this and I tried to like use my own life as an example. And I really like, I really just didn't have anything, not like not anything good, honestly, like all I could think about was like, I gave somebody a sandwich one time or like money or I mean my time, <laughs> but there was nothing that felt, I guess, substantial is what I'm saying. There's nothing I've ever given that caused me pain or caused me grief for the purpose of making someone else that much better, right? Like I didn't cut off my arm and give them my arm or I, I haven't given a kidney or anything like that. And so what have you given for someone else? What's the biggest thing? Because last week, Josh got to talk about uh, Jesus' early life, his childhood, right? Um, so this week, I'm talking about Jesus' death, um, um, what he did for us. Because I think in church, when we're in church a lot of times, when we say the, the phrase, Jesus died for you, um, it's kind of lost a little bit of its power, a little bit of its like umph behind it, right? Um, it doesn't. It doesn't really have that 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 shock factor anymore. We've become so desensitized to this idea that Jesus died for us. It's almost like we have this feeling of Jesus. Well, I mean, somebody's died for me. Jesus died for me, but it wasn't like a. It wasn't like a real person, right? That died for me. It wasn't like somebody I knew. So we've kind of like lost this idea of like Jesus died for us. He lost his life for us. Even the sentence, Jesus died for you, um, is a little underselling it, I would say. Um, it's, it's not everything. It doesn't encompass everything he went through. You know, Jesus you know, broke his body for you. He suffered for you mentally, physically, and emotional pain for us. That's what he went through, you know. Jesus was mocked, he was made fun of, he was beaten, all of that stuff for me and you. Uh, if, if you want to look in our Bibles, um, um, which I hope you have Bibles, um, 
with all you being at home, you better have Bibles. Um, if you don't have a Bible, you let me know. I will get you a Bible. I promise. Um, so if you have a Bible or if you have your app with you because you're lazy, you can open that too. We're going to be in Matthew 27. Matthew 27. It's going to be Matthew 27, 45 through 51. 45 through 51. This is what uh, that says. It says, From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over the whole land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama shabak, sabachthani, I, I butchered that, okay? Um, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, just to point out, Jesus is on the cross at this point. When some of those standing here that heard, uh, there that heard this, they said, he's calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, fixed it on a reed, and offered him a drink. But the rest said, the rest of the people said, let's see if Elijah comes to save him. Jesus shouted again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit and died. Suddenly, the curtain of the sanctuary was split in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. See, in this verse, Jesus died. And even like me saying it there, I don't know if it, like I don't know another word that, that I could say that would like jar you or like get you to, to really see the significance or, or make it like really set in that Jesus died. He, he passed away. He, he, he isn't breathing anymore. His brain is not functioning. Like whatever it is I can say, I, I want you to get and I want you to understand that Jesus is not living at this point. He's not asleep. He is dead. He has given everything humanly possible for me and you at this point. And I don't want you to forget why. I know a lot of you watching this right now are going, I know why Jesus died for me. He, you know, he, he cured my sins. That's, that's great. But I want to remind you, see, in the garden at the beginning, Adam and Eve um, um, were with God. They had a great relationship with God. And, and that was great until Eve and Adam sinned. Then they were kicked out of the garden and from then on, sin separated us from God. Because that's what sin is, is ultimately this anything that causes separation between man and God is sin, okay? And so sin is there. And, 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 and from then until today, basically, we've had this struggle with sin, this, uh, this, this struggle that sin constantly separates us from God. Uh, the, the, there's always that thing uh, in between us. We can't, get, we, can't, we can't be perfect enough to be with God anymore because sin is in the way. And so you see this throughout the entire Old Testament, um, you see the people of God, God protects them, he loves them, he cares for them, um, and, and they love him back until they don't. Like, <laughs> there's always something that comes in the way of that, whether it is they start worshiping other gods, they start uh, doing other stuff around, they start um, 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 sinning or being selfish or or uh, uh, whining or complaining and 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 before you know it they they find themselves in this bad situation like slaves in Egypt and and it's so bad that they start crying out to God again right they they start saying you know God come save us God where have you gone you know uh, 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 why have you left please come get us and so God being God goes and gets them he goes and saves them again he grabs them and he 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 cherishes them and he cares for them and they praise him for saving them and they're so happy and 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 they love him again until they don't like <laughs> that's the cycle that is happening throughout that old testament is is they they love him until they don't and then god has to go rescue them because they're constantly getting tempted and and pulled away from god by this 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 sin right they are infected with sin, and the more they do it, the more and further away they get from God. They pull themselves away. And so God decides he's going to send a son. God decides he's going to send a son, Jesus, to come down, and, he's going to, and Jesus is going to live a perfect, sinless life. Because when God used to go rescue the Israelites, and the Israelites wanted to commune with God, the Israelites had to cleanse themselves first. See, they had to offer sacrifices. They had to get these perfect lambs, and they had to sacrifice them. So they could cleanse the sins of them, their families, the people. And I'm paraphrasing, of course, but they needed to be cleansed to be able to commune with God. And so God decides he's going to send his son Jesus to live a perfect, sinless life so that he can be the perfect sacrifice. Because when I say perfect lambs, I mean really good lambs, but not actually perfect. 
Because the problem with those lambs in the Old Testament, the actual animals, is that um, um, it cleansed the people, but only, only temporarily. Because eventually they would sin again. So Jesus was to come, live this perfect life, and he was to die for us so that we could be cleansed forever. So that we wouldn't need any more lambs, we could just believe. So that's what Jesus does. Jesus comes down. Um, he lives this perfect life, this sinless life. And he gets to this point where now he, he, he gets to choose, right? See, Jesus experiences everything that we experience. We experience free will, so Jesus experiences free will. He has this choice. Is he going to die for us? In fact, Jared talks about this. He's in the garden, and, 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 and Jared talked about the verse where, where basically Jesus prays to God, and he says, God, do I, do, you know, is there any other way? If there's any other way for me to do this, can you please just, like, give it to me? But if there's no other way, then your will be done. So, so this idea of he's not looking forward to it, right? He's not looking forward to this death. He knew it was going to happen, what this death entailed, right? He, he knew what it was going to look like. There are, I don't know if you know this, there are a hun, over a hundred prophecies in the Old Testament that speak towards Jesus' death. Very specific prophecies from prophecies from them casting lots for his clothes. Prophecies like in our verse where it says his, like his mouth will be dry. His, 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 the, the, his tongue will, will be stuck to the roof of his mouth. Right? Other prophecies that say he'll be mocked and he'll, you know, people will yell at him while he's on the cross and and um, the exact words they're going to use, the phrases they're going to use, you know, why won't he save himself? Very specific prophecies that Jesus knew he was going to have to fulfill in the death he had to uh, um, um, partake. And so I imagine a lot of that's running through his mind. He knows what's about to happen. And then he chooses willingly to die for us anyway. Jared talked about that too, that idea of like Peter comes in guns blazing, chops off a guy's ear, and what does Jesus turn to Peter? He's like, don't you think I could have the angel save me? Like, don't you think I, I, I could ask for help if I needed it? So Jesus chose willingly to go die for us, and it's ultimately because Jesus knew the end. So if you want to go back to our verse, Jesus knew the outcome if he dies for us. If you want to go back to our verse, uh, um, I'll be on verse 50. Verse 50 Matthew 27, it says, Jesus shouted again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. He died. Suddenly, the curtain of the sanctuary was split in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. Jesus knew that if he dies, the curtain splits. Now, you may be sitting there going, what the heck does that mean, Nathan? Um, why does it matter if a curtain splits when Jesus dies? Well, here's the thing. So, the priest of that day, when they would go to commune with God, they had to cleanse themselves first, okay? So they had a curtain separating themselves from God. They had a curtain that, that, that made sure they weren't in the presence of God yet until they had offered sacrifices for their sins, okay? And so when the curtain splits, when this idea of the curtain splitting and no longer being there, it's this huge symbolic uh, reference and this huge symbol of the idea that we no longer need sacrifices to come to God. We no longer need to be cleansed because if we believe in him, then we are cleansed forever. Jesus knew this outcome. It's not that Jesus sounds super eager to die the death he died. You know, the painful, getting beaten, mocked, humiliated, um, um, it's not that he was super excited, but he knew that it had to be done this way. Jared talked about that too. It had to be done this way. If Jesus wants, if God wanted to have a relationship with us the way he does now, and if Jesus wanted to have a relationship with us the way he does now, he, this is how it had to be done. This is how it had to happen. See, I don't think we like to talk about this a lot. Um, um, I feel like we don't say this phrase a whole lot in church because it, it sounds like mean, um, but it, it's not. I promise you, it's not mean. It just it just sounds mean. Uh, there's probably better ways to phrase it, but but for the sake of like bluntness and for the sake of making a point, I think we have to understand that God doesn't need us. 
God does not need us. Okay? Uh, God does not need me. God does not need uh, Josh. God does not need you. Um, um, w- when we pray to God, it doesn't make him more powerful. Um, when God does miracles, he doesn't need us there to make it happen. Uh, we, we can't even stop the miracles and plans that God has in motion. He does not need us. But more importantly, God wants us. That's where it comes into play. God wants us so badly. God wants us so badly, he sent his son to die. Jesus wants us so badly that he went and died for us. They knew the outcome. They knew, he knew that if he died, we would get to have a relationship with him. That through his death, we would have life. See, we've all been given gifts talents, uh, um, 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 stuff that we're great at, that God has made us great at. And, and ultimately, God has this plan for our lives, this, this plan that, 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 that he has set before us that, that we should fulfill for his glory. And I wonder, and I'm going to ask you now, like, how much different do you think our lives would be if we approached all of these things that we should be doing for Christ with this idea in mind that he died so that we could do it? See, because, I don't know about you, but me personally, um, um, if, if, if I give something to somebody, my, my hope is that they use it well, right? Like, I, I hope that they use it to its full extent. For instance, um, a lot of times I hear people talk, talk about, well, if we give money to the homeless, uh, you know, we pray that they don't use it for things that, that uh, um, uh, are not good for them. Right. Um, if I give somebody my sandwich, I, I hope they eat it. I would it'd be kind of annoying if I gave them my sandwich, gave up my food for them to eat and they just threw it away. Uh, if I gave uh, um, um, my time to a person, you know, I don't want I don't want them just looking at their phone the whole time. I hope they, you know, spend time with me just like I made time to spend with them. And so we hope that those people we want people to use the things we give them to the fullest of its extent. And Jesus wants the same from us. Right? He, he died so that we could have a relationship with Christ, and he doesn't want us to waste it. He doesn't want us being lukewarm or, or halfway in, halfway out. He wants us committed because he gave his life for us to have that relationship, and he wants us to use that relationship. How much different would our lives be if we approached the things that God wants us to do and the talents and gifts he gave us with this idea that, hey, Jesus died so that I could do that thing. Jesus died so I could be free and have this relationship. So now the question is, what are you going to do with it, students? What are you going to do with this gift, this opportunity that's been given to you? If you've accepted Jesus Christ, then you have this wonderful relationship with God. And he died so that you could fulfill a plan that he has set out for you. What are you going to do about it? What's your next step? How are you going to start tomorrow fulfilling that plan he has for you? And if you don't know Christ, if you're watching this, you don't know Christ. Jesus died so that you could have the opportunity to have a wonderful relationship with a God who loves you, with a God who cherishes you for who you are. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to ignore it and and, and take advantage of it and waste it? Are you going to enter in this relationship full-heartedly and understand that God only wants the best for you? That he has a plan specifically for you because he loves you. Students, what are we going to do with it? Let me pray for us. Dear God, I just just want to pray uh, for these times. Uh, They're stressful. uh, It's high anxiety. Um, I just want to pray for for the people that have this um, 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 disease, that, that it's... Um, um, that you take care of them, that they heal well. Uh, uh, for those of us who, who, who are not like infected, uh, I just pray that you keep us healthy, you who keep our friends, our family members healthy. Um, uh, I just also want to pray for, for um, us as Christians, um, um, that we, we try never to take for granted um, this, this wonderful salvation that you've given to us, this, this death that you died so that we could be free. And I just also want to pray for these students and their families that, that um, through this interesting, unique time, um, um, that they enjoy the extra time they spend with their families. They enjoy the extra time uh, that, that they have to spend uh, 
um, with you, God. And, and, and I just want to pray for this ministry that, that, that even though we're not uh, t- together, so to speak, in, in a room at the same time, I just want to pray that we, um, um, we are able to use this technology and be thankful for this t- technology that allows us to uh, talk together, to um, um, see each other's faces, um, um, and ultimately uh, learn about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, so uh, once again, I just want to say I'm super glad that you're here, super glad that you got to, uh, that you joined us today. Uh, 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 we will be having that Zoom uh, later tonight, so we, we, we hope to see you then. And then guys, I just want to point out too, don't feel like just because we're in the same room, or, or I'm sorry, we're not in the same room anymore, that you can't ask questions. You know, you can always call us, you can always text us. Um, you can always send messages to the um, um, students' Instagram. By the way, if you're not, if you haven't liked or joined the Instagram or, or followed it, you should follow the Instagram. That's that selfless plug. Um, but but don't feel don't feel like you can't ask questions. We're still here for you. We still think about you. We still pray for you, um, um, and we still want to uh, uh, help you, guide you, mentor in any way we possibly can. So. Hope uh, um, we see you soon at the Zoom, and then I hope you have a great week. See you guys later.